Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Usheng Vagoosh, Monster Killer. Now then, all the dwarves are just going about their daily lives, enjoying our wonderfully appointed fortress. Yes, the quality of life has certainly gone uphill in recent months by a, quite a bit, I must say. In this episode, I'm going to try to focus on improving it farther. We still do have a bunch of little touches that we have to add to the fortress, like our museum over here. I'd really like to get that set up, as well as the library and the artifact hall. Yeah, we have to get all that in order. Very important. Yeah, I'm really hoping to have a nice, calm, relaxed episode. Just kind of taking it easy. Nothing too crazy going on. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> no, not really. Because last episode, we discovered the joys of raiding. <laughs> and it has gone over very well. And in fact, like I had said last episode, I've gone ahead and added three more squads to our military. 30 more fighting dwarves. A total of 60 military dwarves now. Isn't that cool? I present to you our new squads, the Granite Hoods, led by Tekad Adilnanir, a former Sandblade who really deserves this position. And we also have the Oily Wasps, led by Endok the Hornet, the one who destroyed that Etten last episode. Yeah, the dwarves are still going crazy about this guy. And so he was a prime candidate to lead his own squad. And last but not least, we have the Silver Kings, led by Astrith Keshak, a former Brass Spike, another dwarf who has really proven themselves in battle. Very exciting, huh? 60 fighting dwarves. Now, I currently have our three new squads down in the barracks doing some training. All the dwarves in these squads, besides the leaders, have no skill in fighting whatsoever. And so they have some training to do before we go sending them out on raids. Oh, and I should also mention that like the sand blades and the brass spikes, I'm allowing these dwarves to have any armor or weapons that they find scattered around the fortress. Stuff that we've made in the past, mostly discarded armor, or stuff dropped by monster slayers, or even the goblins. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it up to them. Not the most quality gear, but it gives them character. And that's what I like. I'm sure they'll choose their equipment well. And so I think we're gonna hold off on the rating just a little bit. And just in the meantime, we're gonna try to get the museum in shape. It's currently the 16th of Limestone 259, early autumn. And as we approach the end of the year, I'm starting to get a little bit nervous that the goblins of the Frosty Barbarity might siege our fortress once more. They tend to come at some point in winter, maybe a little bit before, maybe a little bit after. And it would really stink if we didn't have any warriors in the fortress when they did show up. Well, it looks like the dwarven trade caravans have arrived. Come, come, welcome to Usheng Vagush. I warmly urge you to enjoy the ongoing feast in the Big Bad Dune Hall. It is, as always, extremely well appointed. <laughs> Glorious. A commotion in the caves. Looks like one of the dwarves is throwing a tantrum. Just punched another dwarf in the head, knocking them unconscious, and then continued beating on them. That's not good. Well, thankfully, it doesn't look like she took too much damage in the attack. Still severely uncalled for, though. This is our storyteller, after all. The one in charge of entertaining patrons to our tavern. She certainly didn't deserve that. Well, you're gonna have to cool it down, I mush. Hmm. Gonna have to be keeping an eye on her, I think. I don't want any goddamn trouble in our fortress. And, well, having a look at our justice tab here, it looks like there were five reports of disorderly conduct, with witnesses all pointing at I mush. Yeah, I'm gonna convict her. On all five counts. Yeah, she is in big trouble. Well, it says currently Imush is going to attend a meeting with who I'm not too sure. Oh boy, she just took a severe beating. Oh wow. Ooh, I guess that's what happens. Yeah, she received a beating for her crimes, overseen by Obak the Bat Killer, who seemingly had her placed up on the table in our meeting hall and then beaten in front of everybody. Just kind of as an example, I guess. Oh, and she died too. Damn, yeah, that was one heck of a beating. All that blood all over the place. Brutal, huh? Well, hopefully that message got through to the other dwarves. Violence will not be tolerated between the dwarves of Usheng Vagush. Please, somebody remove the carcass. People are trying to eat. Alright, anyways, back to our museum here. Well, it doesn't look like any dwarves are touching the boulders that are in here. I have them all set to be dumped, but... I had set up a new stockpile down here in our workshop area. It looks like currently dwarves are just running around all over the place trying to get it filled up with items that we have scattered around the fortress which is great, but not directly helping out our museum situation. I mean, I guess it wouldn't hurt to go out on one quick little raid, right? <laughs> Hopefully, because we're doing it. Up here, just to the northeast, we have the remnants of City Seduce, the small goblin pits that we had laid waste to last episode. There's only about 20 individuals left here, and I would really like to finish this place off. So, let's do it. Raid this site, and I'm going to send out the Brass Spikes, alongside the Griffins of Steel and the Rough Lovers. Last episode, we were sending out the sand blades and the brass spikes, but I'm thinking these other two squads might like to get out and stretch their legs a bit too. 
I'd hate to just leave him in the fortress. And we will once again attempt to raise City Seduce. I want this place gone. All set. Go get them, dwarves. Finish those goblins off already, will ya? And in the meantime, I suppose we'll just carry on with getting our fortress straightened up. Such a damn mess, but it's getting there. I'm totally sick of seeing this hallway all cluttered up, that's for sure. But soon, it'll get there. Well, I suppose we can at least start getting our library in order. We can see along these sides here, I'm placing a bunch of stone bookcases. Plenty of space for books. I'm hoping to get some more in upcoming raids. And then along the back side, I've made a couple of little hallways where we can put tables and chairs in these little cubbies. Just kind of a private reading area. You know, just in case a dwarf wants to do some private studying. Ah, another artifact. Kumil Rithlutatir, the Mender Helper, has created Andenvesh, a tunnel tube figurine of Thela Flower Swelter. He claims that as a family heirloom. Let's have a look. The Faded Dusts. This is a tunnel tube figurine of Thela Flower Swelter. All craft ship is of the highest quality. And once again, we have another image here of the elf Thela Flower Swelter being destroyed by the Sand Titan, Caduceum Oakenfires. Man, those dwarves really like that story. Who could blame them? The figurine is encrusted with cushioned diorite capicons, decorated with crundle bone, and encircled with bands of table cut green zircons, round diorite capicons, giant ulm leather, and iron. Also featured on this item is an image of purple yam plants in tunnel tube, as well as an image of the ferocity of prophecies in diorite, which is a horse bone spear artifact in the fortress. Pretty cool. Yeah, that elf being slaughtered by the Sand Titan really is a favorite story of the dwarves. It really must have been something. <laughs> Anywho, it looks like our library is good to go for the most part, so now we just have to designate it as such. When I first set it up, it came with the name the Tin Mansion, but I don't really care for that. So let's see, randomize it a bit. No, no, no. Ah, there we go. Kosoth Edor, the Palace of Howls, in reference to the hollow moaning sounds that emanate from this level. Some say it's the ghosts of dead forgotten beasts, still wandering the halls of Usheng Bagush. But in reality, it's really just a commotion from the Dune Hall downstairs. And now that the library's set up, it looks like we can assign some scholars. Well, I'm not too sure how many dwarves we're going to want in there writing books. But you know, we have Obak up here. Obak Vebakatsas. Monster Killer's only alchemist. This guy's been pestering us to start an alchemist program for quite some time now. And I have not been quick to agree to it. But his wife died recently. She was one of the rough lovers. And you know, I kind of feel bad for the guy, even though he is a surly son of a bastard. So I think we're gonna make him our scholar. And so let's see, a sign scholar. And there we go. Can't wait to see what you come out with, Obak. Very excited. And so yeah, I'd say the Palace of Howls is in pretty good shape right now. And it looks like we're still waiting on this stone to be cleared out in a big way. Yeah, the dwarves have a ton to do. So much cleaning, but it is getting done, believe it or not. I think I'm just gonna keep letting time pass for now wait for our raiders to return, and maybe just keep raiding places in the meantime. Yeah, sounds like a pretty good idea. Oh, and speak of the devil, the brass spikes and others have returned. Let's have a look. Mission report. Raise City Seduce. Autumn 259. Alright, the warriors head up. Enter City Seduce. Asen, the leader of the brass spikes, once again led the dwarves in a cunning attack. And then it looks like she personally slew the leader of the surviving goblins. The dwarves then looted the place, then rampaged through City Seduce. The other goblins that were there fled the place. And then the killer of monsters destroyed City Seduce. Fantastic. Good job, dwarves. So is it gone now? That's very exciting, if so. Now then, spoils report. A whole bunch of crap once more. And strangely enough, they decided to bring back with them two lead cabinets. And I hadn't noticed it in the time, but in one of our previous raids, the dwarves must have also brought back a lead cabinet. Because we have one in the fortress now. <laughs> Why do they keep bringing these things back? I mean, they can't be light, right? <laughs> hey, whatever. Oh, and now when we take a look at the map here, we can see City Seduce. It looks to be grayed out. And in fact, when we go over it, it says no civilized population. We must have completely destroyed the place, huh? That is great. And look at all these other targets around here. I can't wait till we have 50 dwarves going out on these raids. Oh man, it's gonna be so cool. And here come the warriors with their spoils. Good job, all! Today we really showed it to those damn frosty barbarity goblins. They've been attacking us for years now. And what have they accomplished? Pretty much nothing. And then when we attack them, we can destroy an entire village in a couple months. <laughs> oh yes. Monster killer indeed. What was once a dwarven fortress that focused on destroying the beasts found under the Earth's crust is now a dwarven fortress that focuses on destroying the monsters found on the surface. Watch out, goblins. We're coming for you. It's currently the 11th of Moonstone, 259. 
early winter, so maybe we'll hold off on raiding just for a little bit. Remember, this tends to be the time of year that the goblins like to attack us. And hell, I guess there's nothing wrong with taking a little bit of a break, huh? Think of it as a hibernation, I suppose. And then next spring, the dwarves of Wusheng Vagush will once again emerge from the desert in search of plunder and spoils from the nearby goblin settlements. Ah, but there's no hibernation for Forgotten Beasts. Good to hear. The Forgotten Beast Koroa has come. A huge, three-eyed tarantula. It has a pair of fan-like antennae, and it belches and croaks. Its rust exoskeleton is sleek and smooth. Beware its poisonous bite. Somewhat interesting. Again, we have another tarantula with a poisonous bite. It looks like this one is on the old fortress level, near the surface. And we do currently have some civilians out here. Not great. Well, I'll tell you what. This beast doesn't seem that bad. So I'm thinking we take the granite hoods, the oily wasps, and the silver kings out on their first hunting expedition. Should be pretty cool, right? And just like old times, we're going to move them out to the old fortress courtyard. Let's go, dwarves. Your first beast. After today, you'll be true monster killer warriors. All right, watching the creature, it's moving straight in. It is not blocked up by trees. Yep, here it comes. I'm actually going to move the civilians down to the underground, which I probably should have done by now. What a dummy, huh? It seems to have slowed down. Perhaps it senses danger. This could be a wily one, dwarves. Keep your wits about you. Inching forward now, it is approaching the old fortress level. There are no warriors in place yet. Oh, and it looks like it's trying to take this door off the hinges. There is a civilian right over here carrying a coffin. A bit dangerous. Oh, and here come the warriors. Only a couple of them right now. Wait for the other soldiers, dwarves. Don't do anything foolish. Alright, the spider seems reasonably content out there for the time being. Just working away at that door. And it seemingly has no idea how close its death is. Alright, that should be good enough. You ready, warriors? Move out! Alright, the warriors are moving out. There's one dwarf up there. I think that's one of the squad leaders. Oh, and the creatures died. <laughs> Again, I guess I'm not too surprised at this point. Now, let's see here. I thought that that first spear dwarf was in trouble, but I guess not. Doesn't look like that beast landed a single hit. Wonderful. But who killed the beast? Well, it looks like it was Bomrek, one of the granite hoods, who killed the beast with a vicious attack to the cephalothorax with his iron battle axe, which caused the part to be cloven asunder. Beautiful. And then afterwards exclaimed, I have improved my axe. That was not satisfying. Good, glad to hear it actually. He's seemingly not satisfied with this puny beast. Bomrek is on the hunt for larger quarry, more dangerous foes. Yeah, I like the cut of your jib, buddy. But that's enough dilly-dallying recruits. Get back down to that barracks. We need you guys training constantly. The goblins could be here any day now. And now that that beast's out of the way, and considering we finally destroyed our first goblin pit, I'm thinking we should do something to commemorate this event. And so here we could see Ratbite, one of our favorite anvil beaters. Now she's carrying some gold bars up to a small mint I just made, and she's going to make Usheng Vagush's first coins. Queen Obak put her on the job specifically. They are best friends after all. And I have the distinct feeling that Ratbite's going to design us some beautiful coins. You just watch. And she grabs some charcoal, heading back up. She's working. Take your time, Momas. These are our first coins. They have to be something to remember. Oh, and she's done. Let's have a look. She made a stack of 500 gold coins. This is the gold currency of Zugabkivish, our civilization, from the year 259. On the front of the coin is an image of a weapon rack. All right. And on the coin's back is a finely designed image of two forgotten beasts. That's pretty cool, Momas. Not bad at all. Two forgotten beasts as well as a weapon rack. Loaded with weapons, I'm sure. On one side of the coin is the tools of our trade, and on the other, our quarry. Forgotten beasts. That sums up our fortress pretty well, I'd say. Good work, Rapite. Thank you for your service. And we'll make a few stacks of those, too. It'd be nice to have an underground vault overflowing with gold coins at some point. Hmm, this is interesting. A human crossbowman just entered the fortress, alongside his band of mercenaries. He has seven warriors. They all just arrived together. Hmm. And all these visitors are here asking questions about a book titled The Foundations of City Seduce, and somewhat annoyingly, one of our rockbiters revealed the presence of this book to them. The book is in our library currently. Well, warriors, we don't want any trouble with you. You are free to visit, but the book stays here. It's ours now, rightfully plundered from the goblins. And I'll tell you what, just so we don't have any trouble, I'm going to station the sand blades in the meeting hall here. I'm not too sure what's up with these guys, but if trouble pops up, then I want to be ready. Ah. Yet another beast raids our small fortress. The forgotten beast Thull has come, a towering scaly snail. 
It has thin wings of stretched skin and it undulates rhythmically. Its cream scales are small and close set. Beware its webs. Webs, huh? I don't know, we've encountered a few beasts in the past that supposedly had webs, but none of them have ever been a problem. And besides, this thing's a snail. What could it even do to us? Huh. <laughs> yeah, not too concerned, I guess. Now, this creature is just to the south of our fortress. On the third cavern layer, I don't think it'll take long for this creature to get to the fortress, and so I'm gonna be smart and send all the dwarves into the fortress. And on top of that, we'll also assemble our new warriors once more. Hoods, wasps, and kings. Let's go, dwarves. Now, I'm thinking that creature's gonna pop up somewhere around our dump pile out here, and so I'm gonna put my dwarves just inside this door over here. Maybe just back a ways, all right? Just right here. Believe it or not, I'm still actually a bit afraid of webs. They can be a nightmare if a creature decides to shoot them all over the place, and so I don't really want to put all my dwarves out in the open, you know? The beast is swooping in through the caverns, straight towards the fortress, as per usual. No big surprise there. Very high up in the caverns. It is indeed approaching our dump area. It is here. Oh, it looks like we do have a dwarf outside, too, carrying a stone coffin, of course. All right, warriors, I'm sending you guys in. And let's hope for the best, huh? Just like last time, guys. For Usheng Bagush. Let's go. Following the beast, it is swooping in. Up on top of the walkway now. Oop, spraying webs at my dwarves. Dwarves who are out in the caverns. I see at least one dead dwarf now. The snail is enraged. Oop, but it's on the ground. The dwarves pulled it out of the sky and killed it. Very good job, dwarves. A bit of a, a sticky battle there, no pun intended. And it looks like we did lose a recruit. Damn. Oh, and I'm trying to take a look at the combat log here, but there doesn't seem to be much. I know the combat consisted of more than this. Hmm, not too sure what happened. Well, at least we killed it. We are successful once more, dwarves. Good job. And weep not for Atir. They died in true Usheng Bagush warrior fashion, hunting a forgotten beast, as they will continue to do so in the afterlife. Of that, I'm sure. Rest well, Atir. All right, everyone back to work. Hmm, what's this here? Our mayor is meeting with one of those human warriors. Foundations of City Seduce is sought by Fidala Vine Channel, and I aim to return it home. My epic journey began a few months ago, and I can only rest when I've brought the prize safely to the bastion of scribing in Twinkle Folds. Play your role in this noble quest and become legendary. Interesting. I don't know why these warriors are so eager to get this book. Before we go making any rash decisions, I did a little bit of digging in Legends mode, and found that this human here is actually part of a different human civilization than the one we normally deal with. This human's from Sarekbahal, the Untamed Kingdoms, which is a huge civilization down to the south, and I've also found that Twinklefolds is pretty much a center of learning for the world. So many books are written there. Their library must be immense, and we really have no quarrel at all with these humans, so I suppose it wouldn't hurt to hand this book over. But we do have a little bit of a problem. You see, Fidela Vine Channel is an Ilialetha elf one who lives in Twinklefolds. That being said, the elves are really pushing their luck lately, and so I think we're gonna be holding on to this book. Again, we rightfully plundered it from those goblins. It's ours now. Give up this childish errand. We do not part with our treasures lightly. And now off with you, warriors. Our dealings are over. Hey, you know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Those elves have been pushing their luck. We've already agreed to their silly tree regulations. They'll have no more from us dwarves. The line is drawn. What the hell is this? The human crosswoman Katet Abhath Seshed was spotted sneaking around. You will not stand between me and Foundations of City Seduce. I have never seen this before. So this crosswoman's trying to sneak into the fortress? That is so cool and infuriating. Yeah, those warriors just left when this guy popped up. I guess they're pretty determined, huh? And foolish. Well, there are two crosswomen here right now, but only one of them is the sneak. The other is just a warrior attempting to leave the fortress. But I'm gonna lock up these doors so the thief can't escape. And we're gonna call out the warriors, all of them. Ready, dwarves? We have a thieving rat to deal with. Go get him, and make sure he doesn't escape. Following the human, who's coming down the stairwell, down towards the fortress level, fighting with a rough lover. Ooh, and someone's getting hurt. Bunch of blood here, can't really tell what's going on. It looks like they're beating the hell out of this human. Yes, dwarves, get him. Someone's injured, not too sure who that is. Both these guys are really tired. Come on, dwarves, get up here. Ooh, that was the human's teeth we just saw get scattered all over the place. Come on, where's everyone? Oh, there's another dwarf here. Oh, and they killed that human. Good. Man, that was a heck of a fight for this dwarf, huh? They're currently unconscious. They don't look to be doing too well. Hmm, I'm not too sure what's going on with my combat log. Just like last time, it's very short. Hmm. Oh, well. Wait a second. I'm looking at the combat log again, and it looks like those other two human bowmen are fighting as well. And they're attacking my dwarves. 
What the hell? According to this, they are not enemies. They're just guests. But I'm certainly not going to stand for them attacking my dwarves. Let's go, you bastards. We have a couple more guests to deal with. Go get them. I can honestly say I didn't even see that combat. <laughs> Those humans were just wrecked. One of the humans had their head cloven asunder, while the other one was cut so badly in the lower body that it was mostly cut away from the rest of the torso. Yikes. I don't think I'm going to be drawing that picture. <laughs> and you know what? They were both killed by this dwarf here. Oh, one second. It looks like we have a human swordsman up here as well. I did not notice them. Let's take care of this real quick, warriors. Done. And anyways, as I was saying, this dwarf here. Eter Burkag Midorwaluk. An impressive title, huh? This is a dwarf I'm very surprised has not popped up more often, because I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this dwarf has probably killed 10% of the enemies that have ever entered the fortress. Just for reference, here we have Einod Blue Axe, and taking a look, she has 4 notable kills, as well as 38 other kills. Pretty impressive, right? And here's Ass Rithkeshak, the leader of the Silver Kings, another distinguished warrior, with 64 kills. But then we have Eter Earthen Boots, the power of hailing, with 85 kills. Isn't that something? 85 kills? And I mean, sure, two of them are Crundles, but the others are goblins, trolls, and beak dogs. I think the guy deserves a nickname, what do you say? And so, Etter, today I bestow upon you the nickname, Skull. Kind of an imposing name, right? You would think that he earned it based on the fact that he killed so many things here in Ushang Bagush, but really it's more based on his appearance. If we have a look down here, it says his nose is gone. I'm not too sure when he lost it exactly. It was in combat at some point, I'm sure. Poor bastard. <laughs> I like them. And now that those thieves are dealt with, let's have a look over at our museum, which is now completely boulder free, thankfully. And you can see we even have a couple of pedestals in there. I currently have my rock biters making more though, because that's not going to cut it, certainly. But you can see here in the middle of the museum, I have placed our rock crystal pedestal, the one we took from the elves. I figured that warranted a central display. And you know what? Seeing as how everyone wants to get their hands on that book, how about we throw that thing up there? Foundations of City Seduce. Yeah, sounds good to me. There we are. And I suppose we should have a look at this book, too. There's gotta be something special about this thing, right? Foundations of City Seduce. A white jade bound codex. The written portion consists of a 136 page guide entitled Foundations of City Seduce, authored by Gorno Rain up here. It concerns the goblin pits at City Seduce. The writing has a very serious tone, yet it has a hint of viciousness to it. Overall, the prose is not awful, but not very good either. Well, it's kind of cool, I suppose, white jade bound, but really I don't know if it's worth dying for. And with that book placed in the middle of our museum, it's time to figure out what else we're going to put in there. We already have the skeleton of that first wear tapir that attacked us many years ago, as well as a forgotten beast skeleton and the skeleton of that giant bat that our queen killed a long time ago. Yeah, we actually held on to that thing. And there we are, some more pedestals are on the way. And hopefully before long, they'll all be loaded up with forgotten beast bones. I'm sure it won't take that long at all, really. Pretty exciting, huh? And I guess we're gonna have to start keeping a serious eye on this area over here. I didn't realize that people can come and try to steal your stuff. Yeah, it's a bit worrisome. And so just to be safe, I put a couple of silver chains in there too. Just on either side of each of the entrances. Just like that, very good. And to each of those chains, we will attach a cave crocodile. It couldn't hurt, right? Remain vigilant, boys. There could be thieves anywhere. Ah. It looks like yet another vile force of darkness has arrived. And I did just notice it's actually early spring right now. We went through the entire winter without seeing the goblins, but they're here now. Dwarves to the meeting hall and residence level, and we'll watch the goblins move in. Come then, you green-skinned bastards. Trying to get some vengeance for city seduce, huh? <laughs> I wish you the best of luck. Looks like we have a bunch of armed goblins, trolls, and beak dogs. No mounted goblins. Always good and the gate is locked up, we still have a dwarf trying to get into the fortress here, but I think that's the only one up on the surface, thankfully. Alright, now if we have a look over here at the ballistas, I think they're good to go this time. I suppose I'm not getting my hopes too high up though. Now I will once again take all the melee squads and move them to the bottom of the residence hall, just so they can intercept any trolls that might be making a beeline for the fortress. I'm sure there are some. Oh damn, we still have this dwarf trying to get down into the fortress. Come on, you gotta run, go faster. This could be real bad news right here. The trolls are right behind you. Oh boy, here they come. Oh, they spotted the dwarf, I think. Come on, you got it. Just keep going. All right, I think they're good. Whew, that was a close call. And most of the goblins are still making their way down. Hurry up, you bastards. Always oh, so slow. Oh, and we have a large group of trolls moving in. Go get them, recruits. <laughs> Not a chance, trolls. 
Although I am seeing some dwarf blood here. It looks like one of our warriors took some damage in that fighting. And there's a beak dog moving in. Damn it. Come on, Zuglar, get out of there. Oh, it looks like a dwarf has grabbed them and is bringing them to safety. Very good. Just in the nick of time, really. The siege is so spread apart, kind of stinks. I don't know if the ballistas are ever going to have a good chance to shoot into a giant group of goblins. That's what we're waiting for, really. Oh, it looks like some of the warriors have moved down to the entry hall. Hmm, maybe not the smartest move, but I don't think there's going to be any recalling them now. And the group is being led by Inod Blue Axe. Come on, Inod, this is not a smart decision. Hurry up and finish these guys off so you can get back up with the others. Oh man, this is not good. Come on, you idiots, get back up there. Hmm, well they are doing a pretty damn good job, I guess. <laughs> Screw it, keep going, dwarves! Ooh, this is going pretty well. <laughs> Four dwarves versus an entire goblin siege. I like it. Oh yeah, they are not looking to head back. Ooh, one of the dwarves just went flying across the hallway. Man, I'm not sure what hit them. Finish them off, my dwarves! Inod has given chase. It looks like she and another dwarf are heading up by themselves. Very exciting. Man, she really kicked some serious ass. Oop, oh, fighting a goblin. Killed the goblin and is moving on up towards the surface and I'll tell you what before they get there I'm gonna take them off duty the dwarves of Ushangvagush rarely go up to the desert anymore and that sun really affects them negatively yeah it would not be good to do any fighting out there at all as my dwarves enter out into the desert bunch of idiots well the siege is over anyways and interestingly we caught a goblin crossbowman in a cage trap it looks like they were trying to escape out into the caverns stumbled into one of our old cage traps we had set up we'll have to do something with him a little interrogation, perhaps? Perhaps. Oh, and also, if you look down here, we still do have a bunch of invaders on the map. But it's just the goblins and beak dogs who have been floating around in the bottom of our crocodile pit for the past year and a half. I guess this water must be too shallow to drown them. <laughs> the burrow is off. Once again, we did not get to trial our ballistas. Very disappointing. And yeah, another successful siege, I'd say. And so, with the siege at an end, I'm thinking we should start wrapping this episode up. And what an interesting episode, too. We finish off our first goblin pit, City Seduce. Now a memory, and hopefully we'll start hacking away at the others next episode. It is springtime now, prime time for raiding. We have our museum in order, outfitted with some cave crocodile guards, and furnished with a much sought after book right in the middle of the area. Up above we have our library, the Palace of Howls, which is looking pretty damn fine as well. Oh, and we also made some coins, don't forget. The first of many, I hope. And you know, every year you make coins, the design is randomly generated. So I'm curious to see what this year's design will be. Should be pretty cool. But that's all the positive things that happened this episode. What about the nuisances? We had that one troublemaking criminal at the beginning who caused a fistfight with our storyteller. She was swiftly dealt with. Queen Obak's fury was unmatched. And on top of that, we had two forgotten beasts show up, a goblin siege, and a group of warriors who sought the foundation of City Seduce. I think it's so cool that they showed up, asked for the book, but then decided to try to steal it from us. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to be keeping our eyes open, I guess. Bunch of damn troublemakers out there. Well, anyways, not too sure what to expect next episode. We're gonna have to start some more projects, because believe it or not, we're actually catching up on all the work that we've had to do in the fortress. As always, I really hope you enjoyed watching this episode, and I certainly hope you'll join me next time, here in Ushang Vagush. Monster Killer! And until then, you bearded bastards.